All right, we should be live. What's up, everyone? Happy Wednesday. Uh, give me one second. I gotta adjust the lights. All right, that should be better. What's up, everybody? How's it going? First today seems to be Stang on Seven. What's up, Stang? What's up, Luke M. Silver? What up, Craig Lilly? Howdy, y'all. Donut Farmer live in 69 minutes when they posted that. Nice. Donut Farmer always watches, but not necessarily live. Thank you for the support in the VOD after the fact, by the way. Because I'm pretty sure most of the views here usually comes from the live. I don't know how many people watch the VOD after the fact, but did anyone catch the Eclipse Monday? Uh, of course it rained here. All Yeah, so we... We basically had full cloud coverage during the eclipse, so I did not get to see it on Monday at all, uh, unfortunately. Luke M. Silver got to see it though, had a partial in Colorado, pretty neat, waiting for your powers to manifest, just like in Heroes. Remember that show? They made a reboot of that. I never watched that, or they attempted to reboot it, right? I watched the original Heroes up to I forget which season, uh, but... Yeah, that show kind of dropped off pretty quickly. That was like when the big writer strike was happening, I think. That's, I think that's the reason why that show kind of ended up uh, flopping later on. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people were seeing clouds during the eclipse. It got darker closest to us uh, was Cleveland, and it was kind of weird because it got dim enough to where the streetlights started to come on for like two minutes, but the sun was still shining partly. Yeah, I've never seen uh, like an eclipse uh a solar eclipse like that before and i guess the next one's not gonna be till like 2040 or something uh from what i was seeing so yeah it's funny seeing all the memes and stuff online about people trying to look at the eclipse without proper eyewear and the potential for them to burn uh you know their uh retinas or whatever or damage it rather it's interesting because you've we've all seen the sun like we've all looked into the sun almost directly at it right uh but it's so bright that it causes us to uh what's it called squint or look away pretty quickly but during the eclipse the reason why they say it's more dangerous is because you could look at it directly because it is you know mostly covered uh, by the moon but um, your eyes won't realize that they're being damaged as much uh, but I mean you know staring into the sun uh, never a good idea to do for long term regardless of if it's covered or not let's see what we got here Craig Lilly says hmm what's the best PC option at two thousand dollars can you choose the two thousand dollars and stuff no this is a hypothetical where you can't choose the money. You have to spend it. I mean, obviously DIY, actually, maybe I shouldn't say obviously. Most likely DIY is going to come in cheaper, but this, the, the stream topic of today was actually uh, inspired by someone who recently asked me, and uh, they were actually wanting to go the, uh, the pre-built route. And I told them, you know, sometimes pre boats if you can catch a good deal, which we'll be looking for today, uh, you can get it for almost the same price as a DIY and you don't have to do, you know, deal hunting individual parts. You don't have to deal with building it, troubleshooting, should something go wrong if you're not comfortable. So yeah, that's why I kind of wanted to, to look at, take a look at both and see what's on the market right now. Uh, with, I mean, we're still in spring, so uh, it's kind of like doing a, um, a market check. Chemical A traveled to see the eclipse and it was too cloudy to see it, but it was cool. How far did you travel is the question. Did you fly? It would be unfortunate if you spent money to fly and booked hotel and everything like that only for it to be too cloudy to see. But if you just like drove a couple of hours, then that, that definitely is not as bad. I got a pair of Eclipse glasses for free at the library. Apparently, the Eclipse glasses, they have a expiration, which I didn't look into why, 
Uh, I'm not sure if like the lens on it over time just, um, like, if you take care of it, you know, assuming it doesn't get scratched or damaged, why would the plastic have an expiration date? Um, maybe whatever the coating, if there's a special coating on it, it wears off over time. So yeah, if you have Eclipse glasses now, don't try to save them for uh, what? Uh, 16 years in the future and then next Eclipse because you might still damage your eyes apparently. This week ain't got no good tech drama, says Arflet, but Ninja announced a new double stack XL2, uh, oh, new <laughs> air fryer that's good for update people. The only tech drama I saw this week, and maybe you guys saw it too, was with the brand, which is kind of a tech brand, right? Because they make uh, vinyl wraps that you can put on your phones and your Steam decks and consoles and stuff like that. But uh, they bashed on a, um, you know, D-Brand always does their thing where they try to be super edgy and uh, bash on their customer base. And um, they made fun of someone's last name because it sounded like shit rash. Uh, but apparently uh, a bunch of people went up in arms because, and they said D-Brand was racist, which is kind of a, of a reach there. D-Brand was just... I don't think their intention was to be racist, making fun of the person's last name. It, it could have been a person of any ethnicity and they would have done the same thing. But people got mad at it, which did, uh, doesn't seem to happen too often. I think this is because it was like potentially cultural. But anyways, yeah, that's the only thing that I saw. Uh, D-Brand has kind of apologized for it. I don't really get the whole D-Brand um, like humor in terms of like uh, deprecating on their their customer base but people seem to like it and find it hilarious it was funny like the first couple of times around right when d-band would just like uh treat their customers like crap but it's just like their long going stick that i feel like once you reach a certain age it's just like not that funny anymore but to each their own Danny with the fresh cut. Indeed. I literally just got a haircut earlier uh, earlier today. My hair was getting long. I'm not sure if you've been noticing on the streams, but yeah. Once my hair starts getting like too long and getting bedhead and stuff, it is time for a cut. But thank you for noticing. I appreciate it. Remember back in uh, high school or middle school, every time someone got a haircut in the YouTube, People would slap the back of their head and say fresh cut. Do, do kids still do that nowadays? P, PSJC Gamer says, hey, Neural Budget, your bids are expiring. Thanks for making them. I appreciate that. I need to get a video out soon. It's been coming up on two months. I haven't released a long form video for a couple of months, but I've been you know, streaming, releasing shorts on a pretty consistent basis. And I've been doing stuff in the background. It's not like I haven't done anything for the channel. I've been doing stuff like uh, this past weekend, I went down to uh, PDX land and I actually recorded some interviews of people in their PCs and did those survey style videos as well as uh, like the land party stories, recording that. So I'm, I'm working on stuff, but um, yeah, just haven't released a long form. That should be probably next week. Zach said, did someone say tech drama? Yeah, uh, I was just talking about the uh, D brand thing. If, if you're on Twitter, you likely saw it, but it's not real tech drama. It's not like that big. People are just trying to cancel D brand for doing what they've kind of always been doing. Sounds like D-Brand should be D-Bags. <laughs> Yo, what up, Chris? Uh, let's see. If I can get a job and get paid as soon as I can, then I can build that $350 PC from last month. Yeah, if anything, try to, if I, I would try to save up as much as you can. I don't know how much you make, you know, doing what per hour or per job, but yeah, if you, I would say the sweet spot for like a budget machine, if you can spend like around 500, that's like, yeah, sure. Of course you could build something at 300, 350, 400. But I think like getting to that 500, you're able to get a build 
without really like, you know, sacrificing on quality and power supply or like keeping out super on the case. And you get something that lasts like a little bit longer. Like every like 50 to $100 you can throw in more at the lower end, it goes a long way. Uh, but yeah, definitely save up and uh, build something good. What am I planning for the next video? Well, it's probably gonna be the, the Lenovo uh, P520 build. Uh, I got a graphics card for that. I'm not gonna share what it is yet to keep it a surprise, but yeah. So uh, I just need to go through the full uh, benchmarking and uh, video production with it, but that's likely gonna be the next video. When should we expect a LAN video? Uh, so the LAN just happened, was that just last week? Uh, no, it wasn't just last weekend, but the weekend before that, like a week and a half ago. But yeah, it's not going to be out for a couple of months. Land videos always take longer. I do want to get started on it sooner rather than later, though. You just got out of work, Chris? Dang. 5.30? I mean, for a lot of people who work 9 to 5 and take a 30-minute break, that's when usually when they leave. But uh, if you got in earlier than that, then dang. Uh, it sucks. How am I liking the A770 so far? Uh, no major complaints, but I always, uh, say this when people ask about the A770. It's fine, but it's not like I would recommend it to friends or family or viewers at the price that they're going at. Like, I think still AMD and even NVIDIA, like, you can get, uh, better value. Like, the A770, for the most part, is for if you're curious or want to tinker and stuff like that, but... It's not like, I think it's still too early for Intel cards to be like worth getting more than NVIDIA or AMD cards. Especially since like, I the what, the 16 gigabytes of VRAM is pretty a big talking factor or was uh, AV1 encoding. It's like you can get that on the, uh, like AMD has a 16 gigabyte card for like around 300 bucks uh, with AV1. So, yeah, what the, the advantages that Intel had when the ARC cards first came out, it's kind of like gone now with the newer NVIDIA and AMD cards. You're waiting for Battle Mage? Yeah, I think Battle Mage, I'm, I would be super excited once that drops. Um, but I think that's still going to be a while out. Definitely not this year, uh, if I had to guess. And then I don't think in the first half of next year either. Do I still have my 2080 Super? You remember that, Mr. Stan? 2080 Super, yes, I still have my 2080 Super from visiting NVIDIA headquarters. Let me see where it is. You know, I, I actually never ended up using it. I, I'm keeping it because it's like uh, almost like a souvenir. But, ah, uh, here it is. I do keep it, um, use it as like an emergency if I need a somewhat powerful card or like let, I loan it out to people and stuff like that. But I'm definitely never going to get rid of this and selling it. But yeah, dude, when was that? That was 2019, wasn't it? Uh, when we visited NVIDIA headquarters and got these. So I still have it. I can't believe you remember though. I don't, I never made a video about this, so how do you remember <laughs> that I even have this? I don't remember ever putting this in any video, any YouTube short, any stream at all. Maybe there was a stream, but man, that is like a deep cut right there that you you remember that I have it. Oh, Zach made a video. Okay, so, okay, so you deduced that I also got one because Zach got one from the visit. Got it. That That's still though. Pretty, pretty deep cut. Uh, yeah, so I don't, in the video, so in that video, wasn't what I give away a 2080 Ti to the winner of that competition, but I don't think I mentioned that I got a 2080 Super in that video at all. But yeah, it was from that same trip. Yeah, and also the reason I'm never going to get rid of it is because it's a Founders Edition. Like, any Founders Edition cards that I get from any generation from here on out, 
I'm just gonna keep it. There's no selling it, no putting it into builds and selling it. Uh, I'm just keeping them as, uh, you know, collector's pieces. And then I could always revisit them down the road once they're super old uh, to make cool content on it. So yeah, it. I don't know if I like the mirror design as much though, as uh, when they had the non-mirror. Like, yeah, you can see the mirror on there. Uh, like, do I have the 2060? Let me see. I should have the 2060 somewhere. Uh, it might actually be in uh, the living room PC, but I guess most of the time you don't even see the mirror because once you install it, unless you do like a uh, a, a riser, a vertical riser, you just see like this view, anyways. So. Yeah, and then the black one from the 2080 Ti looked nice too. Remember when Radeon Founders Edition, Frontier Edition, I think? Wait, which which one was that? Is that the blue one with the yellow cube? Ah, oh, yes. Also, one of the one of the best looking cards in my opinion. The even the non Frontier Edition, but when it was uh, with the red the red cube and the the gunmetal gray or whatever design. Yeah, I like those one as well. Estimate on land video? What is, okay, let's see. Estimate on land video. Right now it's April. Let's say June. Early June. Hey, this graphics card matches my shirt. Curious how AMD hasn't invited you despite your contract with them to show them in every video. I know, right? See, this is why I'm going to stop shilling for AMD soon and start shilling for NVIDIA because they actually like me. I know I've betrayed NVIDIA for many years, but I, I might turn soon. I might change teams. Okay, let's see. Yeah, go to where the money's at and NVIDIA is definitely where the money's at. Raymond Sim says, I'm looking at 2500 for a decent rig here in Australia. What is that conversion again? Uh, let me see, let me see. $2,500 Oz to USD. So that's like, that's like $1,600, okay. If I had to, just off the top of my head without like looking at a f you know individual parts sixteen hundred dollars that's what a you should be able to fit a forty seventy into that price range a forty seventy because those are or forty seventy super um or like a seventy eight hundred xt because that's like what five hundred ish dollars of the budget and that gives you like a nice thousand to get everything else pretty comfortably you could probably push it more but you would you might have to skimp on uh like not choosing as nice of a case and things like that jensen has his jacket lisa sue has her giant ring when she held up a cpu at ces 2019 when my wife went with me she said look at the size of that r oh lisa sue I see if that's a thing on the internet. Ah, yes. 16 cores and a big rock. You know what? Olga was not the only person, Chris. Yeah, look at that. You think that's a real diamond or moissanite? You think Lisa Sue is the type of person to, to rock a moissanite ring because it's more practical? Lisa, Lisa Sue Swag Kit Extreme. Let's take a look at this. Looks like people are admiring Auntie Lisa Sue here. Pointy shoe boys. Giant money rock on the neck. Punch line or punch and ring. Normal people watch. Mafia engagement ring. Captain Planet Unite. Children's watch. <laughs> That's funny. I 
I mean, when you're when you got that kind of money, I don't think uh, this is probably a drop in the bucket. Lisa Sue's so gangster. <laughs> Okay, so let's, I do have a somewhat cut off at 7 p.m., so like an hour and a half from now. So let's get into the topic of today's stream. $2,000, and I actually want to first start with pre-builds because um, we, we can pull up the pre-builds, then leave the tabs open, and then uh, try to build something that is better than the pre-built, hopefully. But when it comes to pre builds we looked a, a week or two ago and some of the companies that had really good deals when we checked, like Starforge, for whatever reason in the last six months or whatever, their, their prices seem to have like gotten worse. Which is not too surprising, right? That's kind of like the bait and switch for any new company. Get really good prices, get your rep out, get, your, get the word of mouth going, and then increase the prices once people like myself normally recommend your company like i recommended starforce for so long and checking the other week at the prices i was actually surprised that it didn't seem like they had as good a value so in terms of pre boats right now um there's not any company that i could think of off the top of my head that has like tremendously good value compared to diy uh like what companies do you guys have come to mind when you think of if you had to recommend a pre-built to someone, you can normally recommend it with no problem. You, good looking, you were looking... Yeah, so we can bring up Starforge first, but if anyone else has any other companies that they've heard of or recently bought from that they thought was a good deal, let me know. NZXT and Starforge are the two ones that I typically name and bring up. The only issue is that uh, I'm not well, maybe it's a uh, market shift in pricing too, but we can bring these up. So, in NZXT's side of things, you're gonna be looking at the player two prime. Um, if you look at the player two non prime, it's about $1,600. So, the player two prime is $2,100, which is close enough. Like, um, we'll use this one as a reference for a $2,000 PC. Now, let's take a look at Starforge. Uh, which PC was it that was around 2000? I think it's the Horizon 2 Elite. Uh, I'll admit, no, it was not. It's actually the, is it the Navigator? So Navigator Pro is, so these two are the same price. Let me zoom out a bit. This is so zoomed in. Skytech, yeah, Skytech is also another one that's been pretty popular because I think also, in overall, I think, uh, Reviewers give Skytech a pretty good uh, mark. Like, also, Gamers Nexus, who's, you know, very nitpicky about everything, uh, has given them pretty good marks as well. So we got Never Go. I wouldn't say Never Go pre-build. There, there are very legit reasons to go pre-build. Many of them being, I'm not building PCs for every one of my friends and family and viewers and stuff. So I gotta have other outlets to push them towards to buy a pc from if like you know not even just me like any of you out there who is the pc or tech guy in your circle of loved ones and friends like as much as you like building pcs do you always build them pcs or do you sometimes recommend them pre-built because they don't live in the same state as you uh because they might be in a different country etc so yeah i'm lazy af exactly it's not because i'm lazy i I like to build for my friends and family, but sometimes they aren't they aren't patient to want to wait for me to deal hunt and to build. And then a lot of the times it's because uh, the people who are not in the same state. Like I will gladly build for anyone who lives near me, but once I have to order all the parts, build it, and then ship the, the build out, uh, it becomes less of an enticing like reason to build for them. So yeah. Cor so Corsair is actually on the pricier end, but we'll take a look at so let's see, I'm, I'm pulling up all the different tabs first and then we'll take a look. But Corsair, if we're looking at their gaming PCs, uh, all gaming PCs, they are definitely on the more premium side when it comes to price. But let me sort this and find that their $2,000 build. Yeah, they start at like, they don't have anything lower than like around $1,600, $1,700. 
Uh, two, this one is 2000 but it's on sale. But sales count. So I'll click on this one because it's on sale. If I build it and something happens in a year, they're going to come to me. I'd rather they go to Best Buy lol, says Jason. Yeah, the whole customer support thing too. Like as much as building it yourself is fun and great and you save money. For your own PC, that makes sense. But if you're doing it for like... 20 like i have so many pcs floating out and about right now for to my friends and family and stuff and for them i will give them free tech support but beyond that i ain't trying to do that like i cannot give free tech support to viewers uh yeah best buy is also a good one the, so good thing about best buy is they have builds from iBuyPower. they have builds from cyberpower they have builds from like a bunch of the different companies so uh i also looked at this so for $2,000, I was able to find a 4070, uh, I think it was a TI build from Best Buy. But let me see. We'll put like 1800 to 2100 sure. And see what we can find. Okay, so we, we actually got a bunch, unless anyone gives any other names that is very unique. Uh, I think we're pretty good. We got Starforge, NZXT, Skytech, Corsair, and Best Buy. Uh, high to low, we'll go to that. Wa Walmart's also a good one, but I would say the stuff that you find at Walmart will be very similar. It'll be like Skytech selling their stuff on Walmart or CyberPower, iBuyPower. I know Walmart has their own in-house brand, but I'm trying to limit this here so that we could just kind of get an idea um, as to what, what is out there in the market. Like, yeah, okay. So let's first take a look at Best Buy is the latest one that we brought up. So for $2,100, you're getting either a Ryzen 9 7900X or an i7-14700, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabyte SSD, and a 4070 Ti Super. Uh, and you get a relatively, you know, if you like the height Y60, this is a pretty expensive case. So, you know, um, assuming that, I don't know what they're putting for the power supply, but we're just going to assume that it's like decent enough. Uh, I don't think they're going to list it on here either. Let me see. Power. Yeah, they, they don't list the details of the power supply, which is what... Uh, yep, it is not on here. We're just going to assume that they give you a power supply that's not going to blow up your computer. So that's what you're looking at for, for uh, Best Buy. Uh, now for Corsair, remember, you're getting a Ryzen 9 or a... Uh, a 14th gen, a 14th gen i7. Now for Corsair for 2000, you know it's not 2100 like the Best Buy one was, but it's still within the ballpark. Here you're getting only an i5 14600K. You're getting a 4070 Super, not a 4070 Ti Super. You do get 32 gigs of RAM, but you're only getting one terabyte of the SSD. So Corsair is worse than the Best Buy deal. Um. The only saving grace that I would say here is they're like, like, do they tell you what um, tech specs? So the power supply you're going to get is a 750 watt ATX 80 plus gold. And if it's a Corsair power supply, we're looking at, uh, I'm, this is either A or B tier. They're not specifying what it is, but Corte Corsair power supply specs with uh, that's gold rated uh, off the top of my head, you're likely getting like a, a good quality power supply. So while you're not getting as much, uh, you're getting like half the SSD storage, you're getting a, you know, a bump down from an i7 to an i5, and you're getting a not as good graphics card, but your power supply is going to be a little bit better and it's a hundred bucks less. Uh, I don't know. I would still probably point someone towards the Best Buy though. Now we're looking at, uh, here's Skytech. Let's take a look. Uh, can I put a price range? Yeah, let's put, again, around that same price around there. Let's see what they have. Is it going to send me some computers or what's going on here? Ah, here it is. It needed time to think. We're going to sort from low to high and then... Oh, man, dude. Skytech? How big is this company? Look at this. Oh, wait. Are they doing... Uh, they... 
they undid my filter. What do you prefer, a 3-fan GPU or 2-fan? Honestly, if it's the same price and like of the same tier, like let's say it's the, like a same gigabyte, right? Sometimes gigabyte makes the same exact like wind force card in both the 2 and 3-fan. I would probably choose 3-fan every single time if size and constraint, it wasn't a constraint. Um, but honestly, aside from that, if like a two fan card is even like 10, 15, 20 bucks cheaper, uh, and it's, you know, again, same ish quality card, I would pick the, the cheaper of the two cards, like between two and three fans. It, to me, it's not that big of a deal generally. Um, but there are legit reasons on why you might want to pick a three fan versus two, right? Uh, the biggest one I can really think of is cooling wise. Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But if you have a case that's like larger and you want to fill the space, you can get the three fan. Um, but three fans mean if something fails, there's more parts to technically fail. But then you have to think of how often do graphics card fans fail? Of all the graphics cards that you might have possibly owned in your life, how many have you actually used to the point where the, the fans fail? So um, yeah, back to my original point, not a huge deal. Like I don't, I don't target specifically two or three fan cards unless uh aesthetics was like a big deal and i would need to either fit it in a smaller case with like a two fan card or try to fill up the space with three fan mr stan it is 1 a 1 45 a.m gonna head off have a good stream for sure thanks for stopping by mr stan appreciate it all right so from sky tech another uh oh clearance sale for sky tech look it's crazy. I have filtered this from, you know, a pretty tight price range, 1700 to 2200 about. They have 115 results. Now, this is probably because this website is set up so that you could configure, you can basically get like a bajillion different configurations. And they probably, it says pre built PCs, but I don't think these are ready to order. Like when you order one of these, they probably then put it together. So they have like a combination of a, a million different parts, but it's kind of crazy. They, this is probably like the most options I have seen from a website for configuring or for buying pre-builds. Like they straight up for this narrow band of price range, they have 115 results. So, I mean, there's way too much to choose from. So I'm just going to scroll through real quick and see if I can pick something that looks like decent value because there's no way I can go through like 115 of these but yeah so 7800 XT 7800 X3D okay or you're getting like a 4070 Super i7 um it's weird right I'm not looking I don't want to click on this because it's going to undo my filter but look at this look these three are within like 20 or 30 bucks of each other but this one has a 4070 Super i5 this one has a 4070 Super i7. This one has a 7800 XT, 7800 X3D. Between these two, here, let me open a new tab. Like, what does this have that makes it? You're looking at four, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabyte. Okay. On this one, you're only getting a one terabyte. So yeah, Skytech has a crazy amount of options where they're just kind of playing around with what you could swap parts in and out for would you rather have an extra terabyte of storage or would you rather bump up your i5 to an i7 uh honestly storage you can just get whenever i i mean like i would probably in a build in most builds i i focus on the core specs which is going to be cpu and gpu like you can do with one terabyte but in this case i mean you only have a 4070 super in it it's not like you're going to be super cpu bottlenecked so yeah um interesting avery posted uh avery ketting says no but i posted my clean pc she was dusty all right i'll take a look in the uh the submissions in a second we're just trying to look through what options we have real quick um what's the beefiest one we could find honestly it's probably gonna be the amd one 
Uh, I'll click on this one right here. So Sky Tech, and we're gonna compare it. We're looking at a Ryzen 9 7900X3D with a 7800XT, which is gonna be on par with like the 4070 Ti Super. Hamther the Cracker. Two Canadian dollars. Yo, I like your vids. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. This is your third super on a live stream? Dude, YouTube with all the specs. Thanks. Thanks for the donation. Uh, okay. So, for here's the SkyTech one. So, you are getting the Ryzen 9 7900X3D. You're probably going to be set with that for, for like the longest time ever. Uh, I don't really care about the case. We're looking at core specs here. 32 gigs of RAM. 7800 XT, you do get a one terabyte SSD. So everything else is pretty standard. So we already put Corsair kind of in last place. But comparing these two, this one, this one has a 7900X with the 4070 Ti Super. This one has a 7900X3D with the 7800 XT. Hey, what's up, Kevin? What up, what up, what up? Yeah, th most of these builds, I think, are going to give you uh, 5200 mega transfers uh, memory. I don't think this one's going to specify it, but I would be surprised if they gave anything nicer. Oh, so on Best Buy, it does specify 5600, but still, like, 5200, 5600, at this, at 2000, if you built yourself, you're likely going to be able to fit in 6000 TL30. But I'm not going to be too uh, too picky on that because most of these pre-built companies are going to be choosing like sub 6,000 speed. But yeah, so between these two, it's kind of up in the air which one you could pick. Be you know, AMD versus the uh, NVIDIA card. Though this one does have the 2 terabyte SSD which is to me kind of more standout. Eight, yeah, most people won't notice 5200 and 6000, but if you are trying to look at, like, you know, nitpicking for specs, uh, there is that difference there. All right, let's take a look at NZXT. Oh my god, Chris with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, NZXT Flare 2 Prime, $2,100. What are we getting here? We're getting a Ryzen 7 7700X, and we're getting a 4070 Ti. You're getting 32 gigs of RAM at the same 5200. You get a B650, one terabyte. So NZXT is kind of, kind of, uh, it's better than the Corsair value because you are getting a 4070 Ti. Because the Corsair was a super, but um, I mean, for the same price, the I buy power from Best Buy and SkyTech, you're getting better either on the processor or on the storage. Okay, and then let's look at Starforge and see where they are on the list. So Starforge Navigator PC. It's a nice case and all, but what are we looking at here? We're looking at a 13th gen i5. We're looking at, okay, they have modded cable mod sleeves, which is... I mean, it's just black sleeve cables. This is like, we're talking like Asia horse cable here. They're, except they got cable mod ones, which are, I think, more expensive. We're looking at 32 gigs of 6,000, but it's CL38. Uh, I can't do the true latency calculation in my head, but 6,000 CL38 versus, uh, they didn't even put the latency on the other one, so it's hard to say. But let's just say this is, this is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, there, there are better latency memory out there, but this one has a 4070 super, not TI super. Okay. But this one has a two terabyte. So that's the options we have. I know there's much more out there, but these are some of the popular like things or uh, popular companies and offerings. So between those, which one should we use as a reference for the pre-built? Should we use the... Skytech? I think Skytech Sky and Best Buy are for sure leading the pack here. Starforge, NZXT, and Corsair with their fancier websites, unfortunately, they aren't bringing the value. 
What time is it in my country? In here, Germany, it's 2.54 in the morning. It is 5.55 here, almost 6 p.m. in the west coast of the United States. Okay, I'll do Redux real fast too because someone said so. We looked at Redux, was it last week or the week before? Um, but, uh, let's see. Uh, we could modify this one. Redux is, I mean, I know Linus did like an ad spot for them recently, so let's see. Let me see best. So this one is 2400. Yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna modify the better one. So for 1800, you're getting a 47 super. So yeah, can I, let me modify this, customize. I bet if I bring the processor up to a 14th gen, yeah, let's do that. It's gonna make it the right, the same price. Okay, so when we bring, uh, oh, we have room to even maybe change the, let's see, memory is 16 gigabytes. Is this really using a, it's a B760, okay. So let's put 32 gigs in there at least, but this is gonna be DDR4. All right, we're at 19 something. Let me see if I can change the graphics card. What's the storage? One terabyte, okay. Let's change the storage up. Uh, I mean, no, 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 the graphics. If I wanted to get a 4070 Ti Super, oof, that's gonna be 200 bucks more. Actually, that might bring it to like 21 something. All right, you're paying 2148 from Build Redux. And what do you get from them? A 14th gen i7, except DDR4 RAM. I could change the motherboard, but it'll be way too expensive. It's gonna bring the price up. But you're getting a 4070 Ti Super and a uh, i7 14th gen. I still don't think this is as good of a value as the Skytech and Best Buy one. Game night is starting late AF tonight, but we did buy some, co heck yeah, Costco Dino Nuggies. What's up, Shauner? You know what's funny? We ate all the Dino Nuggies. We, we finished the whole box this last LAN party, but that's across 14 people. So maybe that's not that big of a feat. But heck yeah, with the Costco, Costco Dino Nuggies. Gotta give some Dino Nuggies in the chat. I need to get some different shapes in here for that, but... Uh, what's up, Shauner? Thanks for checking in. Build Redux, yeah, indeed. All right, so the best value pre-builds are... is down to the Skytech or Best Buy. The nice thing about Best Buy is you can likely go in and buy this in under a week. Like... Most, a lot of their stuff, you can go to the brick and mortar and pick up. With Skytech, you gotta wait, I don't know what their ship times and delivery times are, but between the two, which one do you guys wanna use as a reference? Skytech hands down? Skytech hands down, what, oh, what's up? Death, how you doing? We got Death Tech from Jawa in the house. Um, but yeah, so the Skytech, I mean, for 20, 2029, so we can round that down to $2,000. You're getting the 7900 XDD, you're getting the 7800 XT, you're getting 32 gigs of RAM, but yeah, it's whatever, 5200 megahertz. Uh, you're at one terabyte NVMe. I'm assuming, let's just please assume this to be like a uh, B tier or better power supply. It's Wi Fi and all that. Yeah. Skytech do be looking clean though. Um, what case is this? The Prism 3 White? Uh, what brand is this? The Prism 3 white case. Is that a Skytech, like, in-house that they... I'm not seeing the Prism 3... It's not a height case, right? I'm looking at the back of it. The... the this looks like a... Looks like a height... Like the height, uh, what's it called? Y60 has like a similar design to this. The Niso P1. I trust SI more than I would trust retail stores to be honest. Well, so for this one, would you consider iBuyPower a, an SI? Because iBuyPower, you could go buy from their website. It's just that they also sell on Best Buy. So I, I would count this as a same thing as the SI. Now, I buy power doesn't have the best reputation, but uh, you know, that's, that's another thing. Yeah, Brea Thor, so we're gonna assume no coupons though, because we have to make it a, a level playing field. 
but of course there's always like random sales or discount codes because yeah Brandon Thorne does get pretty cool discount codes for a lot of the SIs that he reviews from so I'm pretty sure Skytech uses Corsair and other mainstream brands. Yeah, Skytech does. Uh, I buy power kind of does too, at least these days. WTF, Danny still using the A770? I still am. It is still in the rig. There's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just going to use it as long as I can. Maybe I can use it up until Battle Mage comes out, and then I'll just swap it for that. But... Okay, so this is the reference we're going to try to beat building ourselves. Now, we've got some pretty beefy parts in here. Uh, let's see, so we got 500 here. 7900X3D, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but it's time to go over to build a uh, PC part picker. So we're going to do two different builds. We're going to do one where we replicate Skytech and see how much they're actually charging uh, on top of their build fee. So for the case, we might have to pick something else. For the cooler, it's going to be a 360 AIO. I don't know what they use. It might just be some generic, so we could also use some some uh, generic as well. Uh, like we could use the Thermalrite Frozen Prism ARGB for sixty bucks, because to our knowledge, we don't know if they're using a quality one or not. Uh, so I'm just gonna fill this out real quick. They have an X670 DDR5. Okay, motherboard X670. We don't know which one they're using, but it does have Wi-Fi. Uh, and actually, let me look. Looking at the picture, we could see the heat sinks on these. Yeah, I think uh, I think it looks like this, the Asus Prime. So we'll just use the Asus Prime uh, to make it easy. They do have uh, so 32 gigabytes. As all the kits are going to be 32. What am I saying? They are using a 5200 uh, RGB set, though. Uh, 32 gig. So let's go 2 by 16. It's going to be a common configuration. So I'm going to choose the first RGB kit I can find. It's going to be the Team Group Deltas. Uh, let's see. Storage. They're probably not choosing the most high-end 1 terabyte Gen 4 drive. So we will also not use the most high-end one. Oh no, not times four. Where's the... Can you not choose the gen? That's not how we want to search for it. WD Blue, is that what they're using? You can't really see because it it's probably under the heat sink. If I were just to look at one terabytes though, uh, let's take a look at one terabyte. One terabyte SSD. Oh, I gotta go M.2. Uh, oh, here it is. There it is. Okay, so these are gonna be for sure M.2 Gen 4s. All right, this is what we have. To... Give me a second. I gotta cough real fast. Um, between all of these, so we're going from 60 to 70 bucks, Western Digital Blue, Team Group Create, yeah, these are all, Solid Diamond P41 Plus, we'll go with the Solid Diamond one, 70 bucks gives you a pretty decent budget, so you can choose any brand that you want, Video Card, we're gonna do 7800 XT, and honestly, what are they using? That picture is not even reflective. Let's not choose like the cheapest Azrock Challenger one. Let's choose like, um, actually, I like the Sapphire. I like the reference model, but mm. oh, Hellhound. Hellhound's actually, okay, I'm going with the Hellhound. That's actually 500 bucks. Uh, we gotta choose a case. So what would be an equivalent case to this? Prism 3. I'm not sure we can find the Prism 3. It is not a thing because it's their own in-house. 
Oh, yeah. What, what's wrong? Uh, part switch. Let me go back. What do you mean by the X XFX card? Oh, they use the XFX card? Is that what it is? Uh, it just says, where do they specify it? How, how do you know that they're using the SFX, XFX one? This is just, I think, a generic picture. I don't think this is necessarily... Um, I don't think this is necessarily reflective of it. That is an XFX card? Really? Here, let me, let me pull it. Uh, XFX Speedster. I don't know. That doesn't look like that to me. You could tell by the look of it. You're telling me this side profile looks like this. Oh, uh, actually, yeah, I think you're you're actually right. Now that I'm seeing the slant right there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, the the case looks like a Niso P1. Okay, so yeah, we could probably choose that. Uh, both cards are 500 bucks. So either way, it's the same price. But we'll put the exact same one since. Uh, you guys were able to identify that. So, Niso P1. Gamdia Niso P1. You are correct. Why would they not just list it when it's so blatantly like that case? Okay, so that's $150 for the case, which is a decent amount. Uh, power supply. What are, we, what are they giving us here? Um, they're giving 850 watt gold. So, we'll, we'll look for the same thing. We'll look for the cheapest one. Because we, we know nothing about the actual model or the tier. Okay, maybe not the Apivia Galaxy. <laughs> the Apivia Galaxy 80 plus gold is also 850 watts. Only $70 though. What's up, Falco? What up, what up? Best Buy Trust. Uh, so, in terms of trying to... I'm actually pretty okay with choosing the Thermaltake Tough Power GX3. So, that's 90 bucks, 80 plus gold, 850 watt. It's not the cheapest thing here by about $20, but I think it kind of um, kind of covers us, right? In terms of like not using a complete garbage tier power supply. Yeah, so we'll go with this. And the Wi-Fi, what else we got? Windows. What do we want to do about Windows? So, so far, putting together this exact same build, unless I'm missing something, We've got pretty much the same specs, probably different parts. Uh, and then let's add Windows, uh, not that price. The thing, the thing is, when you buy a pre-built, they're giving you a legitimate retail copy of Windows, not a gray market, not an OEM. You get like a legit Windows key and license. So, it's not the same to say like, oh, just get a gray market key. Uh, I will, okay, I'll add fans too in a second. But it, it's kind of tough, right? When you go DIY, you do get the benefit of being able to use, you can even crack windows, whatever. By OEM, uh, can I, I can't put custom prices in here. And the cheapest one is 100, so I'm not going to put that in. Shauner still runs unactivated. Do you change your background? You can't use it. You can't do that using the Windows menu, but you can do it by right-clicking a picture and saying set desktop background. There are tricks around it. All right, we're not going to put a, we're not going to put a Windows key. Yeah. It is I I'm not saying that gray market keys are like going to fail you or stuff. It's just is it a fair comparison when com when trying to compare to a uh, to a pre-built to use a gray market key, you know, worth which I guess it should be because that's what everybody does. So yeah, gray market keys are OEM, so they're only meant for one-time use. As soon as you try to change your CPU uh, or a motherboard, rather not CPU, um, it's gonna deactivate itself. Whereas if you have a legit retail vault, uh, retail key, when you change hardware, you could just put in your activation again and it will be okay. So there is benefits, but I don't know if the benefits are worth paying $100 plus for a Windows key. 
or you can do other ways to activate for free like mass uh, and other things but we're not gonna talk about that here um, okay we got to add some fans in uh, this case is so you got the so we need about like four fans worth because this case apparently doesn't come with any fans yep zero fans so we're gonna add uh, we don't necessarily need exactly four fans we could add in so they have RGB fans I mean you can get some thermal right fans for like very cheap I'm trying to look for a thermal right three pack Oh, they don't have prices on here. The only thing about fans is, uh, yeah, the uh, price filter kind of sucks for them. I'm just going to try to find any fan I could throw in to be representative of the price, though. Thermal right 3-pack for 17 bucks. Here we go. We'll add in two of them just for safe measure. We'll add in two of them. Well, I'm not going to add in Knock to Wall or Be Quiet because I am sure... This Skytech PC is not using higher end fans. So we're trying to do a side-by-side a -side rebuilding just to see how much value the Skytech PC could be offering. Imagine spending $100 on a Windows key. Same people who buy Norton or McAfee licenses for sure. Yeah, you would just buy another key. You could buy four different motherboards and still come in less than what a Windows key costs by going gray market. Yeah, that is very true. Okay, so we got to revisit this build before we do the comparison though. If you were to take a look at this build before putting together a parts list yourself, let's say a friend came up to you and was like, hey man, I got $2,000 to spend. What, how does this PC look? You know, you're seeing that it has a 7900 XUD. You're seeing it has a 7800 XT. You're seeing, you know, it's in this case. You're seeing 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte. Would you try to quickly steer your friend away from buying this or would you be like hey that's actually a pretty decent value uh you're not you don't have to build it yourself it gets shipped to you ready to go you're spending two thousand bucks and you're getting some pretty high-end specs two thousand dollars would definitely buy a lot of taco bell not as much as it would have in like the 90s and early 2000s but still a lot of taco bell just like looking at this I don't think this is like horrible value at all. All things considered, that it's built, it's you know got Windows pre-installed, it gets shipped to you ready to go, and you get whatever the heck customer support uh, that you get you know from from uh, from Skytech. You, I would agree with you there. I don't think there's any other builds though that. Well, at least I didn't see that gave you that much better of a graphics card value. The CPU here is pretty OP. Can we, we can't customize this, can we? We can't. Don't worry, just assume it's a C tier or better. Like, they don't give us all the information here. Maybe if you emailed Skytech, they could give you the exact model. But yeah, the 7800 X3D is better, but, uh, we did not see that when we were looking at the, the builds. <sighs> this is not how I would balance a build, but so we could build what Skytech is offering here for, we can round this up, say $1,700, right? Because we don't know if they're using a better quality AIO, better quality case fans, etc. So the build, itself is valued just looking at the parts and maybe plus whatever for windows at about seventeen hundred dollars skytech is tagging another 300 on top of it about for their warranty for their building and shipping because it is free shipping and as, as you know shipping something like this this pc is going to be pretty heavy uh so you know if you wanted to ship a, a full built PC yourself, that would easily be like 60 to 70 bucks anywhere in the US. That's going through pirate ship. So after shipping is taken out to account, they're only really upcharging like 250 bucks, which isn't too bad. 10 fans. Oh, maybe I needed to add another one in there. Yeah, they might have fans at the bottom that we can't see or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they must have three at the bottom for 10 fans total. 
300 not bad for someone who does not know how to build their own PC. I, yeah, I would agree with that. I think they're... I mean, after you take the shipping out and them potentially using higher quality parts than we chose, it actually doesn't look that bad of a deal. They, I don't know if they count the... I don't... I would not count the GPU fans. There is likely... I would say it's more likely they're counting three fans at the bottom that we can't see. I, I've never used this case, so I don't know if there's like a grill that covers the three fans and that you install them like, you know, in a different chamber. But either way, you get, yeah, warranties and all that stuff for 2000 uh, versus building your own. Now, this is not the build that I would do. Like, I would not build this. I'm, we can start another build. Oh, we can't. I would, because I'm in the one incognito window. How can I start, start new? Here we go. So let me actually put all this in the description for people to look after the fact. Uh -uh, Skytech build. Uh, okay. And then we're going to get this here. All right, so we'll save that there. The 7800 XC looks like the cheapest they could get. Uh, for what? You mean like the cheapest model of 7800 XT? Or that you're saying that's like the lowest they would go? All right, now we were to build this on our, on our own. The first thing that I would do to try to make like a more balanced and better value PC um give me a second man my cough is not going uh so i'm gonna fill out everything else except for the graphics card and cpu and motherboard just so we can see what we can get uh ssd uh m.2 pci okay We'll choose, to be fair, we'll choose the same SSD. Um, so a power supply. See, you don't even necessarily need a uh, 850 watt power supply. I think for most cases, 750 watt is gonna be good enough for you. How is the CX650s actually? If the Corsair CX750 rather, it's 65 bucks. That's actually not that bad of value. It's the 2023 model. I think that goes C tier. For 65 though. Uh, Thermotech Smart BX1 for 70 bucks. I don't know what video card I'm going to go for yet. Oh wait, let's see. Falco says, Danny, what GPU would you have paired with the i5-1200? What would I pair for that? You currently have a 3060. I would still, I mean, from your 3060, you're looking at like, for a decent upgrade, I don't know how much you have to spend. Uh, what card get for a second build? Like 70, 6800 XT. 7800 XT if you have if you're spending around like the 450 to 500 dollar price range uh anything less than that then I don't know like because what the 67 uh the 6700 XT is already 330 ish right now I think um and that's like it's a it's a definite upgrade over the 3060 but n not like one that I would make if I already had a graphics card, if that makes sense. Like if I already had a 3060, I'm gonna be going like multiple jumps up, not just the next level, which is what the 6700 XT would be around. Uh, okay, power supply. Uh, I'm actually gonna choose the, what is the Smart BX1? I totally forget. This is where the tier list is helpful for when you can't remember everything off the top of your head and things are priced well. 
What are we looking at? BX1 here. Thermal Tech Smart BX1 Tier 3. Okay, we're not going for that one. Um, yeah, I think we're going to go with the CX2023 because I think that's at least C tier. Which, as y'all know, I'm pretty comfortable with. Though, at $2,000, you could uh, you could definitely fit in... Let me see. CX... BM3... That's too new. It's not out yet. Shift. Yeah, for 90 bucks, the 750X shift. Uh, super. F okay. Let me look at some of these more affordable ones. MSI Mag. MSI Mag ABN. Okay, the BNs are C tier, low end. Okay, I'm actually, I would be okay with that. The Be Quiet. Where's the Be Quiet? I'm not even seeing it yet. The first, Be Quiet Pure Power, 750 for 90 bucks. That's a Pure Power 11. Okay, Pure Power. Uh, Looking at mid range, okay. How much are the 850 watts now that we're just. If it's not that big of a price difference, I guess we could go for those. BM3s. I think the BM3s, they haven't been uh, thoroughly torn down and reviewed yet, but I'm thinking these are gonna be CB tier. Uh, but. Oh, GX3, actually. GX3. Nope. He's on a folk. Yeah, so 850 watts, there's not a ton of... Yeah, we don't... Dude, we don't need uh, 850 watts. We could go with... Uh, yeah, the Be Quiet for 90 bucks, that's actually not that much more. That well, the mag 74, so it's $15 more, which is the be quiet because it is a solid B. Uh, okay, so then we gotta choose a case. All right, so the case you could grab whatever, but let's try to choose a case that is at like closer to the hundred dollar mark. Um, also, if it's fit, fitted with fans, that would be helpful. Look at man, there's so many options, way too crazy. Like, how how do you guys choose cases to be, like, I, if I'm being honest out here? Like, I'm still learning about new cases every single day and, like, using cases for the first time ever, like, all the time. There's way too many cases out here. But we do know that typically when you are, like, sub $80, you, you kind of get, like, cheaper quality cases. Um... Let me see. We can always go back and change the power supply, by the way. I'm just trying to fill out the parts that we know we need, and that's like the most universal. Oh my god. Like, we're still going through the cases, and we're only at the $100 range. Like, I love cases like, okay, the Land Cool. Probably can find something a little bit nicer than that. Corsair 3000D. Uh, let me take a look at this real quick. So this is like a slightly cheaper version of like a 4000D, but it is still a mid tower. The Deep Cool C560. My case depends on my board. Yeah, so we're just going to try to choose like a pretty basic white or black aesthetic theme. Uh, we're not going for anything too crazy here because this is just a generic build after all CH 650 uh, or 560 rather yeah, I actually like that case No, 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 no. go back uh, What did I just do? Why did it just add this DIY PC case in here? 
Yeah, the the CH560 I built in the digital version of it. How much is this going for? This is going for 94. Let me look at the fan text real quick. XT Pro Ultra is 50 uh 70 bucks. Let me see. Yeah, so this is a pretty I mean, these cases work. Uh, it's on the, like, I'm not, this isn't like a super cheap bottom of the barrel case, but it's definitely, uh, one of the more, I would say this is definitely a budget option because it comes with four included ARGB fans in a mid tower. Uh, but I mean, I have no issues with choosing this case. Some people might look at a build weird if you, uh, use a case that's like this inexpensive at a $2,000 budget, but Hey, that means it's more parts uh better parts that you could use elsewhere uh what other options so there's the fantex and then some people are saying oh we're not going to nr200 that's too small h510 flow yeah so ngxt cases you know what we're gonna go with the fantex because uh that's kind of a different case pro ultra heck yeah and then we have more room for other stuff all right so where's the pro ultra support in terms of it does support 360 AIOs. So let's fill in an AIO with, um, let's see, what do we got here? We can go with the, how much are, oh man, yeah, they go up in price quick. We'll go with the ID Cooling Dash Flow, or Cooler Master, RGB, Iceberg. And who's gonna know, yeah, if, if your PC looks like, you know, a box with tempered glass and some RGB, unless you like know like a lot about PCs, a, a case is a case, right? It holds your parts, it keeps them protected, it gives you a power button and, you know, IO to plug stuff in. Like that's the core uh, function of a case. Uh, let's go with the thermal right. Uh, God, they have so many options and id cooling does too have a decent amount i'm gonna go with the thermal right not i chose a white one but you could easily go with the black one i'm just trying to fill in the price here because we gotta go we gotta go quicker this is taking longer than i thought all right we've got almost everything that we needed prior to the core components that being cpu gpu motherboard and then the ram has to be compatible we're only at 300 dollars so far we have $1,700 to spend until we get to $2,000. What are we filling this build with? You know what? We're going to choose the graphics card. So every... Let's look at the different 4080 options. 4080 Super for 1000 Can we get a 4080 Super into this build? That is the question. Seventy nine hundred XCX is the solid dime SSD DRAM list. Uh, let me see, solid dime. I forget P one was it plus DRAM. Uh, yep, it is DRAM list, but with NVMe drives, it's less of a is less of an issue. You could go for a DRAM drive, but uh, I think. If you could find a D I, I can swap it out with a DRAM drive if you can find one that is similar priced. But to me, it's not worth spending another 30 bucks for a drive that has DRAM. Um, 4080 Super. I'm thinking 4080 Super, but people were saying uh, 7900 XTX, which is pretty much the same price. Actually, you can get a one for $100 cheaper. I just think it would be cool to put a 4080 Super in it because... Uh, you know, when you have an NVIDIA card in a build, everyone is like... It, I think it would be a more popular option with the general PC gamer, like the average PC gamer. If they saw a build with a 4080 Super and a 7900 XTX in it, I'm thinking more of them would choose the 4080 Super. So we added this in. We still have 700 bucks to fill out the rest of the parts, which I think is plenty of money. Yeah, so if you can find... Oh, what the heck? 
this was 70 bucks for one terabyte. Ooh, we might change the SSD for, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure we can find one with DRAM for 70 bucks at one terabyte. Uh, but I'm going to go, I'm going to come back to this later. Hey, what's up, Demon Mint? All right. So we got, we, we still need memory, motherboard, and CPU for $700 to pair with the 4080 Super. What are we choosing? Uh, let's see, 700 bucks, that's gonna give us around, if we, like, 400, 200, 100. That's about the distribution. Uh, so, like, $200 motherboard, $400 CPU, about 100 bucks for 32 gigs of RAM. If we get something cheaper on the CPU side, then we could put more into the RAM. Uh, we're probably going to need more than 100 bucks. So yeah, if we can find something that's like 350 uh, or less. I haven't chosen a motherboard yet, so it's not going to tell me what I need. Uh, let me see. Zen 4. What do we have in terms of the options? So it's either going to be... Uh, we could easily fit a Ryzen 7 or an i7. So we could go the Intel NVIDIA route. Um, let's see. So yeah, we would be looking at like a 7900 or 7700X. Uh, actually, we could probably go up to the 380 mark. So it's either, it's like the AMD versus, uh, okay, here, here we go. Which company? Let's take a look real quick at the i7, what, 1400, 14700, take out the Zen 4 from the filter. So yeah, it's going to be a 1700KF, but then you're going to need an overclockable motherboard, whereas pretty much all of AMD's motherboards are overclockable if we get the B series board. It's 2.32 a.m. Have a good night, PSJC. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, it's going to either be, I, I'm afraid if we go with the Intel side of things, trying to get a Z board, it's going to push it pretty dang close to the, the end. So what do we do? Which processor? AMD or Intel? We're pairing with the 4080 Super here. Why bother with the Z board? Assuming we go with the K, the K chip. We could save and go non-Z board, save a little bit of money, uh, go with the 14700 with, just don't overclock. You can still keep the, the cooler uh, to run lower temps or lower fan noise, but yeah, let's see what people want to vote. I'm leaning towards AMD, but if people want Intel, we could throw the Intel in it. Yeah, uh, for even, the Intel chips are just kind of expensive. I mean, you could go for the 13, let's see, how much are 13, seven? So these are a little bit cheaper uh, by like about 50 bucks to their counterparts. But yeah, still, I'm leaning towards AMD. So that's what, it looks like that's what people are also voting for. Yeah, AMD with the, uh, the longer technically upgrade path, we'll have to wait and see about that, but uh, all right, so between the options, we could go 7800X3D, uh, pair that with the 4080 Super, and then see what we could fill in with the motherboard and RAM. If I was making it, I want AMD. Intel is fine if my buyer is not wanting to upgrade their build at all. Yeah. Over, I would agree with you, Demon Mint. Overclocking is dead for the typical, like, for most people. Um, but, like, how many people have you talked to that still buy Z boards, though? Like, 
enthusiasts or people who are more into the hobby. I think for like an, an umbrella statement, I would agree. I even like I don't uh, overclock. I don't bother with overclocking. I just run it at you know whatever it wants to boost at. Um, and the K chips do have higher boost clocks, but uh, there are people who are still buying Z boards out there. Buying because I can upgrade later is a terrible idea. Don't buy a promise. I mean, that's something that I would bet on. I would I would bet that at least the next major generation of processors from AMD will still be run will still be able to run on uh, the boards that are out now. Obviously, it's not a 100% thing, but what would you bet money on? That's the question. You're right. We don't know. It is uncertain. But if you had to put money on it, and I would actually be willing to put up like a hundred bucks, Demon Mint, just for fun. If you wanna put if you wanna bet and shake hands on it, whether or not uh like the next Ryzen um major like generation will still work on the current boards, then uh I would bet money on that. Look what they were ready to do. But then what did they end up actually doing? Providing much longer support. So if we go with the 7800X3D here, let's choose a motherboard. Uh, okay, let's make sure this thing has Wi-Fi, even though I think most people... I, I, actually, I'm not going to say that. There are probably a lot of people who just play on Wi-Fi. But I... Uh, I definitely like the option for both. Yeah, but we're not talking about Threadripper here. We're not talking about some super high enthusiast, like, and we're talking about consumer, you know, base level boards and stuff like that. If you don't think that, you know, a B650 board or an X670 board that is available right now will support the next generation of chips, I'm willing to bet a hundred bucks that at least 50% or at least the board that I choose here will have bio support for the next gen of chips. And this is not me trying to be like an AMD fanboy or anything like that. Um, I, just, I just think that I already think the AMD is a better value on than the Intel just based on price of what we saw alone. But to me, that is worth the extra like potential uh, like benefit of it I'm willing to bet a hundred bucks go going uh, my beliefs on it but are you willing to bet a hundred bucks that it's not gonna happen that it won't have the support is the question how many people actually do that I actually know a lot of people I've actually helped a lot of people that had like the original or like 1700 or like a, a 2600 or something and they ended up buying like a 5600x i know a lot of people in that situation actually anybody in the chat did you buy a b300 or b400 series board with like a first or second gen um am4 chip and then end up upgrading to like a 5800x3d or 5600x if you did sound off, because I personally know people who I helped build computers for when AM4 first came out, and then like five or six years down the road, they ended up asking me, hey, how can I upgrade my build as cheap as possible? And we just threw in, did a BIOS update, threw in like a 5600X or 5600, call it a day. Um, okay, dude, there's so many boards to choose from. Uh, we just need to stay under 200 bucks and we'll be good, <laughs> to be honest. What is the highest end board we can get for around 200 bucks? Mortar, Tomahawk, uh... Uh, 
we could save money here and go back and add in more storage actually so i'm not going to choose the most expensive board we can pick i'm gonna actually pick something that uh let's see well, never mind b650 gaming plus wi-fi let's take a look at this board i've actually used this board before but i want to make sure give me one second let's take a look at this board okay all right yeah we'll go with this one i think this is a pretty safe choice 170 um so now we just need memory so let's look at what we have for memory options we'll grab rgb as well uh we need 32 gigs we probably fit 64 in but you know what it's not the end of the world if uh you still have to deal with or if you still have um 32 i think 32 is just fine all right 32 oh 107 bucks is actually not as expensive as i thought uh all right we'll, we'll grab some pretty standard middle of the road ram uh we're, we're doing a black build i think so g skill okay wait how much was the g skill neo g skill trident neo uh actually it's for the same price 6400 yo we're getting that one we're gonna remove the team group so we're getting slightly faster same latency uh oh no the cl32 it's the same uh it's almost the same thing then CL32 6400 and CL30 6000. Uh, 6, um, but it's the same price, so we can go with the, the faster speeds. It's fine. And, oh, did, did, was this one Mark Expo? Uh, let me see. Or are you saying that. Is this one Expo? Yep, okay. Yeah, perfect. Even though I've, it's funny, I've used non-Expo uh, memory just fine. I've actually used the, what's it called? The Corsair kit that was made specifically for Intel with AMD hardware and was able to load up the profiles with no problems. But I mean, for the same price and same everything else, it's fine. So we're coming up actually right at the $2,000 mark. We're at 2000 bucks. We filled everything in. Uh, we could probably get more fans. We could get, let's see if we can fit a two terabyte SSD in here. Two terabyte. What are we looking at? Why is it giving me one terabyte still? I want a two terabyte. Oh man, SSD prices. Two terabytes were going for like, remember when they were going for 60 or 70 bucks? That was kind of crazy <laughs> last summer. Yeah, we're not going to go up to this crazy... For the most part, all the options that we're going to have here are going to be DRAM-less. Which again, uh, I, most people aren't going to notice. How much do we have left? Uh, let's see, so we had 64 minus... Yeah, so we, we have to pick something around 120 bucks to, to stay within budget. Um, I mean, between all these options, they're all pretty much the same thing. Uh, they're all going to be DRAMless. I don't think the speeds are listed on here, but their speeds are all going to be pretty similar. And they all probably have some kind of a, uh, what's it called? Like, they're all going to be QLC with some kind of SLC caching for, um, for helping with speeds a little bit.
Crucial P3, which is pretty... Yeah, so Soldan P41 Plus, Crucial P3, uh, MP44L, Western Digital SM580. These are all... None of them, like, separates themselves much from the pack. Uh, that, that's just what you get when you choose budget, budget storage. But I would much rather get a 2 terabyte DRAMless drive than a 1 terabyte DRAM to drive. The nice thing here, that's a good point about DRAM list SSDs uh, using system memory, but I feel like at 32 gigabytes, which, you know, if you're on a DDR5 platform, that's pretty much all the kits that you're going to be able to find. Um, that's like kind of, well, I guess they, they make 24 gigabyte kits now, right? Who started doing that? Was that Corsair? But either way, I feel like that's plenty of, of memory to, uh, to not have to really worry about it. Um, yeah, let's just use the, the Crucial P3. So we're coming up just barely over the $2,000 mark. Now, there's definitely ways to bring down the price. Why are we only... How much are... You want to look at Gen 5 drives? <sighs> we're looking at... Because we have a budget. And I'm not going to $20, $50 here and there uh, my way to the next price bracket. What's the cheapest two ter... The cheapest one... Here... We're looking at, we're only looking at Gen 4 drives because Gen 5 drives start at one terabyte for 140 bucks. I don't know in what world you think people like think that is worth it, but oh, if you're talking about Gen 3 is easy. Yeah, Gen 3 is just fine too. Let's see what Gen 3 prices are. You could, I don't know if you're going to be saving that much more on Gen 3 though. Gen 4 and Gen 3 prices were coming in pretty close to each other, but let's look at what two terabyte drives are looking at. We could save like what? Tw uh, let me see. So for the equivalent drive, I mean, so let's see what the P3 is. I don't know off the top of my head. Two terabyte. So what are we looking at here? Uh, So, the cheapest 2 terabyte Gen 2 drive was 100 bucks already. If you start going for, and it, it quickly goes up, you're free to choose the cheapest SSD that you want. If I were to do that, I guarantee people in the chat would have complained. But now that I didn't choose the cheapest SSD and chose one that was like a little, like 20 bucks more and was Gen 4, people are also going to nitpick that. Either way, let's see. Uh, what what mid here? What mid? I'll make Demon Mid happy. What mid tier Gen three drive do you want for the, at the two terabyte? So we chose the the Gen four P three. This one's one fifteen. But are you just talking about mid tier like with DRAM, like an Evo Plus for one fifty? MP34, where is that at? Uh, okay, what? It's not on here, unfortunately. Let's see. Or maybe it is, and it just doesn't have the price. MP34, is, it does, do you have a different one that we could choose? It's because I want the uh, the price reflected, and I'm not on, uh, I'm not logged in, so I can't choose a custom price. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If there was a Gen 3 drive that was 2 terabytes for less than a Gen 4 1 terabyte, for me, the as much as people love to like look at all the different bells and whistles different SSDs have and the different speeds, for me, the biggest, most important thing after you go into SSD is the capacity. So long as I'm not using like a spinning drive or like a SATA based or like a 2.5 inch drive, once you enter the realm of NVMe, M.2s, the first thing I'm going for is like what capacity do I need? Then I'll look at price and then it's like, yeah, if it has DRAM and all that stuff, but usually DRAM included 
uh, or other uh, like special features, higher read write speeds and stuff. Um, all that, it's, it starts costing more. Like I'm okay with using the cheapest drive. Like if I then if I'm buying my like I I've never owned a the biggest drive I've owned SSD is like two terabytes. I know for a fact the first four terabyte or eight terabyte SSD that I buy is gonna be like a budget drive. It's probably not gonna have DRAM. It's gonna be like the biggest capacity I can get for the cheapest price because the storage that I'm using it for. Now, in this case, it's not the same thing, right? This one's going to hold OS, it's going to hold games and all that stuff. But just in general, I find that capacity and price will dictate most of the time when you are conscious about your money. Irony is that I'm actually using a 1TB Gen 4 and a 2TB Gen 3. Exactly! It, the, the thing is, though, that 2TB Gen 3 probably did not cost that much more, or at least right now in today's market, does not cost that much more than a one terabyte Gen 4. Yeah, one terabyte definitely doesn't last that long these days. That's why we're, we went for the two terabyte. But in terms of like, I mean, half of these drives are like the, almost the same exact thing as the other. I, I don't, there is a SSD spreadsheet, but it's not as nice as like the tier list in terms of having to look stuff up. Off the top of my head, I can't easily name like a DRAM drive that is reasonably priced. I've just found that for the most part, because it's not free for companies to add in like a D or to add in DRAM, not a DRAM, to SSDs, the, the price for like a one terabyte drive with and without it is easily 20 to $30 price difference. And when you're talking about like a $50 drive, that, that's a pretty big like percentage, so. When dealing with storage, capacity is king. That's my thoughts on it. I think people out there with more money to spend or for specific use cases, like professional use cases and stuff, like there's definitely an argument to spend more on premium drives. But come on, if you're talking about the average PC user, the average gamer, spending more on a drive when you could save that money or put it elsewhere, I don't think it's like, it's worth it. Yeah, pricing is weird. Y yeah, no, SSD pricing kind of goes all over the place. And an issue with it too is that a lot of companies after a few years, they like release a new iteration of a similar drive. So then the old drives go out of stock and then they get like stupid Amazon prices and then you got your new drives which uh, kind of replace them and they're, they might be similarly priced but they aren't fully reviewed yet or like, you know, aren't fully tested. So it's kind of hard. The SSD market is kind of like a constantly moving target as well. Like um, half of this, half of the stuff on here, like you you might like the mp33 versus the 33 pro versus the 34 versus the 30 what 34 l that we saw earlier there's like a, a billion different iterations of the different drives so yeah it's the ud90 gen 4 that's not even on here oh actually no it's because i had the wrong Filters on. Silicon Power UD90. One terabyte is 80 bucks by itself. Two terabytes is 102. So it's the same, pr similar price. Um, two terabyte scales up pretty equally. What is the P3 Plus going for? Maybe we can just throw that one in and be done. P3 Plus, two terabyte. P3 Plus, two terabyte. 118. What did. Uh, wait, that we already grabbed that one. Yeah, so I mean, we're pretty much done with the build. I'll link this just in case someone watches the VOD after the pack. So $2,000 RTX 4080 Super and 7800 X3D DIY build. So let's now do a final comparison to what we were looking at from Skytech and even uh, Best Buy.
Yeah, Gen 3 stuff, I've noticed that too. Every time I do PC Part Picker, it's like less and less Gen 3 stuff are being are available with like a available pricing because uh, it kind of makes sense that companies are kind of moving on to the, the next stage of the tech. Like, why keep on making uh, Gen 3 drives when I don't know how like the cost difference of the, the business, but um, I mean, we've seen that with, with other like uh, graphics cards and stuff too, as they start phasing out like 6,000 series cards and 3,000 series uh, NVIDIA cards, it's gonna affect the pricing too. But all right, so you could have gone with the SkyTech build with a one terabyte, it is a Gen 4 SSD, uh, 7800 XT, 32 gigs of 5200 megahertz RAM, X670 and a 7900 x 3 Or you could take all that money and build yourself and get a 4080 super system with a 7800 x 3 32 gigs of RAM, double the SSD storage. You actually get to choose your power supply and not a random mystery power supply that they give you. Uh, we are choosing, admittedly, a more budget case, but it's not like this is like straight up DIY PC. This is still a, a decently looking case. Um, and we still got everything else. We've got the AIO, which you don't even necessarily need, but we're just doing it to match the other build. Uh, Wi-Fi B650 motherboard. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of want to change this AIO out, but it's fine. When does the land video come out? Probably early June. I have not even started reviewing the footage for that yet. I have like 15 hours of footage total. So yeah, I, I've not even started looking at it yet. I dropped all the footage in a timeline then closed out a Premiere Pro. We could, yeah, if we put air cooling in here, let's see what air cooler we could choose. Um, let's see. uh water cooled so we'll just put no i mean you could get a nice air cooler for let's let's increase the price just because there's so many 20 dollars cheap budget coolers let's increase the price a little bit to see what else we could choose like a nice beefy air cooler if you want um Okay, actually the, the price starts going up relatively quickly. See, at this point, you're going to spend the same amount for the air cooler. So then it's kind of like preference, right? When you start uh, going into like the $60, $70, you can get 360 AIOs from like Thermalrite and uh, ID cooling and stuff for around that same price. They're more right, like Phantom Spirit. Do they not have that? Phantom? Oh, water cooled and price range. Phantom Spirit is 40 bucks. Uh, I've, I've never used the Phantom Spirit, but. Uh, I'm trying to take a look at how much, how much metal is there. Best air cooler for the price. Uh, let's see. No electrolysis, no sludge, no having to monitor for service. Yeah, I mean, I usually prefer air coolers unless you're doing like a special a build that's like ITX or something that calls for uh, for an AIO. You're using the Scythe Mugen Five. How much is that? So. Scythe Mugen 5. Uh, just looking at... Let me see. Without the numbers at my fingertips, I, I think the... Uh, 
the the thermal right would have that one beat. One second. Oh, we are at seven o'clock. All right, give me one minute. Gotta do something real quick. So adding this into the build, it actually doesn't change the price all too much. Let's assume that you want like an RGB version just because everything else in the build is RGB. So if we were to add an air cooler into it instead of the, what, $70, it does bring us down below the $2,000 uh, mark if you had like a hard, you know, cutoff on your budget there. But um, I mean, with the amount of money, let's see, there's 23 bucks left to spend. So 23 plus this. That gives you up to almost a $60 budget on an air cooler if you want, which you could fill it with a lot of different coolers. I'll trust an air cooler after the warranty has run out, but water cooling, not so much. That's true. Air coolers, simply just some fans. And honestly, when it comes to air coolers, yeah, what is the... So the... Let me, let me take a look at what gamers next or let's see uh let's see a review on this thing because the 7800 xd is 120 watts so let's take a look at the phantoms there's tdp just to get an idea of what it's made for what did they use this on is there a review here okay here we they paired it with the 13700, okay. I'd rather go under than over my budget if it's up to the CPU cooler. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Uh... Yeah, so, I mean, so, the 3700K and the 7800X3D, they're both around similar TDP. So they're both like 120, 125 watt. So they used it, the Phantom Spirit here. Uh, and let's see, maximum watts cooled. Uh, say, so up to 234 compared to some of the other more well known. So it, I mean, Let's look at the temps though. Max noise level, where's the temps? Watts cooled, no noise normalized. Yeah. Uh, it's competitive with like the Scythe Fuma 3, AK620, Dark Rock Pro 4. Uh, CPU Delta T at 175 watts, 56 degrees. Yeah, so it looks like it's perfectly capable. I've seen people use 240 watt coolers for a 3600, like a, a Ryzen 5 3600. It just made me cry inside. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I don't know. The only reason to do that is if you want to run your fans at basically like minimal RPMs or something, because you're going for more less noise. All right, so there we have it. I, I mean, I think most of us coming into this knew that DIY would be cheaper, but uh, again, I don't think the SkyTech and Best Buy deals were horrible by any means. I probably should have picked or configured something on their website that was not a freaking 7900 X3D paired with a 7800 XT. It probably could have gotten better balance there, but I think the same thing would have been like 
200 to 300 dollar thrown on top of it for their build fees and stuff so yeah it's not it's not surprising at all that we were able to put something together uh for under two thousand dollars with you know you get a 4080 super which eats up half of that budget and then you fill out the rest with very modern uh parts that would last you easily several years The Phantom Spirit is considered the best air cooler for the budget for a reason. Yeah, it's kind of cool to see that you could pair a 40, less than $40 cooler with a $400 processor and be okay. In most cases, like people who are building with less powerful systems, like 65 watt chips and stuff like that, you don't even need the Phantom Spirit. Uh, you could go down to like a half priced uh assassin which goes for around 17 to 18 bucks um <laughs> you know you're buying a half price chip you you can go exactly with the half price cooler too but if you wanted to spend on this for whatever reason 35 bucks at the end of the day isn't that much like you could easily still pair this with like i5s and ryzen 5s that are much lower tdp and uh just get a much cooler running quieter running uh cpu cooler Just goes to, sh yeah, when it comes to, like, if you guys had to think, well, we've got about, like, five more minutes left before I, I gotta go, but, uh, like, what areas do you guys typically see people overspending on PC parts? For me, it's typically the power supply and the cooler. Um, sometimes the motherboard, too. Like, I don't know... I've seen people put together these build lists where like they're buying a $200 processor and then they put like a $200, $250 motherboard with it. To me, that's like, I don't know if I can think of a scenario where that ever makes sense. RGB fans. Okay. Here's the thing though. If you're buying fans, spending the same amount on RGB fans, I would not consider like overspending because look at it. Thermal Right has a pack of three RGB fans for $13. At that point, why not go RGB? I guess if you're going for fan quality, but there is no, I can't think of any, like if you're going for like high quality fans, you're not gonna find a three pack for 12 bucks, right? So you've got like two different customer bases here. You've got people who just need some fans to get airflow in their case, in which case, you know, a three pack for 13 bucks is hard to beat. Or you're going for the people who have more money to spend so that they could basically make a silent PC build or have like the best uh, performance to noise ratio that they can get. But those people are willing to spend like 35 bucks on a fan and stuff like that, right? So I wouldn't say I've seen too many people, unless they're buying like Corsair RGB fans, then yeah, they're spending <laughs> quite a bit more. But, all right, MGLR, take it easy. RGB motherboards can be pricey just because they are white. Yeah, I mean, it's not just motherboards. Paying the the white hardware tax is, uh, is definitely a thing. The only time I usually find that stuff is not more expensive is usually the case. White versus black cases, they're typically around the same price. Um, but when it comes to like mother RAM too, RAM, you can usually get white RAM for like the same price as black RAM most of the time. But when it comes to motherboards and, uh, graphics cards, which are the major pieces, the, yeah, you, you pay that white tax. If, if the RGB makes you more happy, why not, right? I'm about to get two Lian Lee fan kits. You mean like the uh, Unifans? How much are those things going for? Uh, Lian Lee Unifan. If you wanted a, yeah, 80 bucks for three fans, what does that work out to be? Like $27 a fan, right? About like 26, 27 bucks a fan. Yeah, these are pricey. 
white hardware tax is something people tend to overpay. I paid for the white hardware tax. Like friggin' that, uh, you can't see it right there because the chat's in the way. But that build right there, I spent uh, like a premium 20% to get a white uh, power color spectral hellhound card. Yeah, man, the it sucks, but you know, sometimes even for me, someone who's usually very money conscious and try to squeeze out performance per dollar, there are some scenarios where you do pay the aesthetics tax and I have done it. I am guilty of doing it. I don't do it often, but I've done it. So I'm not gonna like, you know, talk down about anybody who does. It's your money at the end of the day, right? I remember having to pay $100 extra on a GPU for a white model from Gigabyte. Also, wait, which, which card was it, Demon Mint? Are, is it the Vision? I feel like the, the Gigabyte Vision cards are like not even a true white card. Like, it, it has so much silver going on that I, I've, I've talked about this card specifically before. Like, I'm not a fan of the Vision card. Uh, 4070 Ti, let's see, 4070 Ti white gigabyte. Let's see what card that was. Oh, it's the arrow one. Okay, yeah, they do have the arrow ones, but this one, let me see. Ugh, it's got too much silver though. Like, if I'm paying for a white tax, I better actually be getting a white card, not this silver white thing. But you might have been doing like a theme build that works with the silver. I'm not a fan of uh, gigabytes white cards to be honest from what i've seen yeah oh yeah th this price is probably not right it's just if you're gonna like make something uh i guess they don't market it as a white card but this has too much silver for me to be paying a uh, premium for corsair capella's rgb looks the best but i hate the okay so Corsair IQ software, I still do not fully know how to use the software. To me, it's really confusing how they do the layering system. Like, and trying to set a certain lighting to certain hardware, to me, it's not that intuitive. And I am someone who has played with the Corsair software. I've never like watched a video tutorial or like read documentation. But I've played in the Corsair IQ software quite a bit. And I've gotten to the point where I could set like certain themes and things like that. But so, like when you try to change one thing and then it turns off all your fans just because you wanted to change one fan's lighting, it, it's still confusing to me. I wish I could master IQ, um, but the hours that I've spent playing with it, I have not. Is anyone out there an IQ Pro, the Corsair IQ Pro? Like you could set pretty much any individual fan you want with like complicated lighting modes because I've not reached that stage. I have IQ, I use Signal RGB. I've not, I actually need to do that because this build right here is for the most part uh, IQ stuff. I need to try using Signal RGB with it and see if it's any easier because um, yeah, the IQ software, it could be painful sometimes. Nah, just uninstall it and everyone is saying to use Signal RGB. Just too complicated, buy cheap thermal right. I will say though, that as complicated as IQ is, you could get more effects. If you're going for like a very specific like partial RGB lighting and stuff like that, you have way more control using some of like the, the companies, not just Corsair, but other companies that have like a dedicated hub, you know, and not just a generic motherboard RGB uh, header. You get way more control, but it comes at the cost of a headache of learning the software and the premium of the, the hardware itself, but yeah. Open RGB also good. I've used Open RGB. My issue with Open RGB is that um, it's not compatible with everything out there. And uh, the have they changed it? The UI for Open RGB 
you know, you go download it from like GitHub usually, right? Unless they have like an official website now. But um, it's like a very almost archaic looking interface. Oh, it looks like they did update it uh, since I last used it. It's a little bit nicer now. Um, yeah, it looks like they did go through a UI update since I've used it. But signal RGB is good, but you have to pay for the fan speed control. Well, yeah, just just don't use the fan speed control from that. Use uh, what's the one that we all use now because uh, Jay covered it. Fan control. I, I like fan control. Um, I pretty much use it on all my PCs now. Yeah, so fan control, I have found to be really easy to use and control all my fans. And I could, you know, I, I set my fans usually at like very low speeds because I'm not running crazy hardware. I'd rather have the, the lower noise, but yeah. Open RGB is just one person fixing the mistakes of billion dollar companies. That is true, which is why I'm not going to harp on them so much for their UI because it is like, you know, uh, from what I've heard is a one person team. So, all right, that is going to be it for this week's stream. Uh, I got to get going. I got to get something in my stomach before uh, we go roller skating. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people were asking land party stories. Next video, I mean, we had the land party a week and a half ago. Uh, not going to get done editing that for at least another like month and a half. So I'm going to aim for June, but don't hold me to it. Uh, but yeah, everyone, uh, have a great, oh yeah, I will be releasing new styles of YouTube shorts as well. Uh, I started a series where I, I asked people what's in their builds and we basically showcase random PC gamers out in the world what's in their builds. Uh, so that should be fun. Uh, and then long form content, hopefully the P520 video sometime next week. But everyone, hope you had a great, uh, hope you have a great rest of your night, have a great rest of the week, and have a great weekend coming up. And as always, uh, I will see you next time. I'll be here next week, same time as always for the stream. So take care. Bye everyone.